Hello, hello. My name is Cyan, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for all the support on the first three videos. Y'all just totally blew my mind. I, I was not expecting that kind of response. So yeah, just thank you so much for all the nice comments and everything. Um, I'm really excited to, to keep going. Today's video, we're going to be going over some builds for reinforced plates, rotors, and modular frames. Now, these three items are required for us to advance into the mid game, so it's important that we have a nice steady supply, not only to unlock more milestones, but also to make a lot of the buildings that we need to move forward. Instead of sticking to our basic recipes, we are instead going to take advantage of four alternate recipes that, when used together, will greatly reduce our power consumption and our resource consumption, as well as letting us fit these builds into a smaller footprint, maybe even a blueprint pin hit. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around to the end. Um, they will be available for download. I also plan on making this whole map available for download once this video is complete. Before we get to that though, I want to go over the builds just so you all can see how they function. And then if you want to take them and switch them up later, you're more than able to. To get started, let's Let's go over what we need to have unlocked. Now if you saw our last video, we went over how to get started with a strong starter base and build all your tier 1 items. So in that video, we unlocked all of tier 1. We also unlocked obstacle clearing and logistics mark 2. Not mock 2, mark 2. I'm going to make that mistake a lot. Didn't even know I was doing it. Keep calling me out. I appreciate it. So the only thing we have left is part assembly. So we're going to go ahead. Unlock part assembly to get assemblers, as well as rotors and modular frames. And that's all we'll need for our milestones. We have to shift our focus to the MAM because we need four alternate recipes. Those alternate recipes are cast screw, iron wire, stitched reinforced plate, and bolted modular frame. If getting hard drives off the start is a little intimidating, don't be worried. I posted a full video on how to get a total of seven hard drives, basically from the start of the game. It goes over how to get to each one. You're able to access four of them immediately. And then the remaining three, you can get once we unlock part assembly, like we just did, and grab those with some rotors. So you need a total of four alternate recipes at the start, and we have a total of seven to use. On top of getting hard drives from these crash sites, we also get a bunch of useful items to build with so i highly recommend going on that hard drive run and really jump starting your early game now unlocking hard drives is a big game of luck sometimes we'll get what we want and sometimes you gotta roll again at the start of the game there are a total of six alternate recipes that we could pick three of them are the ones we want every time we unlock an item that has an alternate recipe it'll get added to the pool of choices that we have to pick from we can unlock everything except for bolted modular frames right from the start so getting those out of the way as early as possible means we'll have less to pick through. There are far more hard drives than there are alternate recipes. However, at the start of the game, we cannot access all of them. So it's kind of helpful to min-max the ones that we do have in order to get the recipes we want. If we wait to unlock Caterium and Quartz until we have the hard drives we want, we will ensure that we will get the four alternate recipes we need from the first seven hard drives. So with part assembly unlocked and our alternate recipes researched, let's go and get to some builds. So I have gone ahead and set up each of the items we're building today, but using only the base recipes so that we can compare them to the alternate recipe builds and see how they stack up against each other. So I'm not gonna go into super detail on how I built each one of these. Um, again, the map will be available for download so you can check it out, get into all the machines, see all the numbers, you know, really just get into it. Um, so I'm not going to do that in the video, but I will go over just the kind of basic and important differences. And those are the resources used and power consumed. Um, and you'll be able to see the footprint change when we do the build itself. So to quickly go over the base recipe, in order to make six reinforced plates a minute, which is the equivalent of our alternate recipe output, it requires 72 iron ore a minute 
and costs us about 51 megawatts of power. So nothing wrong with this. This is pretty solid, but we can make it better. In comparison, let's take a look at our alternate recipes. We can already see a change in the iron ore, costing us about 20 iron ore less uh, for a total of 52.25 iron ore a minute. We do produce that same six reinforced plates per minute at a cost of 39 megawatts of power. The alternate recipes we're gonna use for this build are going to be iron wire and stitch reinforced plate. Now these two recipes work together very well because stitch reinforced plate is a more power and resource efficient build and iron wire allows us to make that but only worry about processing iron ore. So let's get started with the build. Now I've gone ahead and set up a 3x9 platform. Later on I will show you how we can fit this all into a blueprint. However, for the sake of the tutorial, I wanted it to be easy to follow, so I kept everything spread out. So to get started, we're going to take a splitter, placing it in the bottom left hand corner. So we only need two smelters, so we're going to line our first smelter up with our splitter, making sure we got those green lines. Skipping column two into column three, we're going to place down our second smelter. Now, everything here is operating on a Mark I belt. We are under 60 items a minute, so we don't have to worry about Mark II right now. If you wanted to add a second reinforced plate module next to this one, you very easily could. Just add a splitter behind this smelter and repeat the build again. Uh, make sure that these belts get upgraded to Mark II though to ensure enough iron is getting to the second module. So from here, set our recipes to smelt iron, place down some power poles, and get our smelters running. Next, move up to the third row and the third column. I'm going to place down one splitter before grabbing our constructors, going to the fourth row and placing down three constructors. From here, using Mark 1 belts, we're going to connect our smelter to our splitter and the splitter to the first two constructors. Next, connect the smelter in the first column directly to the, the constructor. Now we can set our recipes. The two smelters on the right are going to be for iron wire. You can set the recipe and underclock it to make 20 per minute. Use control C and V to copy and paste. For our last constructor, simply set it to iron plates. Of course, the next thing to do is run our power. Now in the second column, we're going to place a merger with the output facing left towards the first column. Connect both iron wire constructors to that merger using Mark 1 belts. And then grab an assembler and line up the left input with the output of our iron plate constructor. You'll see a green line appear when you've got it aligned. Again, using Mark 1 belts, it's as simple as connecting up our inputs, scrolling down, selecting stitched reinforced plate. We do have to use one power shard to slightly overclock this machine. Once we do, our inputs balance out and our output goes to six per minute. Of course, we need to run power. All that's left is to place down our output chest. And this build is operational. All right, the next build on our list is gonna be rotors. So taking a look at the base rotor recipe here, we take 45 iron ore a minute and turn that into four rotors per minute at a cost of about 47 megawatts of power. All right, and over at the alternate recipe flowchart, we can see we are still consuming 45 iron ore a minute. However, we now only need to produce 20 iron rods and the rest can be directly turned into our 100 screws a minute. That reduces our power consumption by about seven megawatts, which while not a huge deal, every little bit helps out. Something just crashed, I'm not sure what. Oh, 
that one. We'll get to it. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna prepare another three by nine platform, and we are gonna copy this exact layout here. I'm gonna again place a splitter down in the bottom left-hand corner, grab our smelter, Again, we're going to look for that green line to show up. Place one down, skip a space, and the other. Since this only takes 45 iron ore a minute, we can operate on Mark 1 belts. We're going to drop our power. We can reduce our smelters right off the start. Set one to consume 20 iron ore a minute and the one in the third column to consume 25. Next, grab a splitter. Again, placing it down in the third row, third column. Followed up by three constructors in a row. We know what to do here. Just repeat our pattern from before. Connect one directly up and the remaining two with splitters. Now we want to make sure that the iron smelter creating 20 iron ingots is the one that we are directly feeding into a, the constructor in front of it. We're going to overclock that constructor to make 20 iron rods per minute, while the iron smelter creating the 25 iron ore a minute will be split and will cover our cast screw. We want to make sure we have power run. Here we'll take our merger, connect these up with Mark 1 belts. Grab the assembler. Again, look for that green line. We can use a Mark 1 belt to connect up our iron rod constructor. However, make sure to use a Mark 2 belt to connect up the cast screws as they are requiring 100 per minute. We'll run power and we are working. Of course, the last thing to do is place our storage chest. And with that, our rotor build is up and running. And as you can see, it is a exact copy of our reinforced plate build. The only difference is the Mark II belt going into the assembler and the power shard goes in the constructor for the rotor build instead of the assembler. All right, the last item on our list today is of course modular frames. So as we can see, the base recipe here consumes 96 iron ore a minute to give us an output of four modular frames per minute. It costs us 91 megawatts of power, which is not a small amount in the early game. That is, you know, three biomass generators um, when everything is up and running. All right, now let's take a look at the flowchart for our alternate recipes. So I like this build a lot because we take advantage of all four recipes in one build. We are going to use the stitch reinforced plate build, which uses iron wire, as well as using cast screws and bolted modular frames. So by doing that, we reduce our consumption by about 16 iron ore a minute, and we reduce our power consumption by almost 20 megawatts, which is pretty nice. We also produce the same amount of modular frames in a much smaller footprint, and we are able to actually blueprint this entire design, which I will show you guys in a minute. But first, let's go over how to set this up for the first time. So to get started, prepare a six by nine area. Start out by placing one splitter in the bottom left corner. We are gonna essentially build our reinforced plate build that we built earlier, and then a cast screw processing section that will feed into our modular frames assembler. So with our first splitter placed, we're gonna skip a space, place down one more, pull out your smelters, again, look for that green line, place down one smelter in front of each splitter, and then head to the fifth column and place down the final smelter. All right, for this build, we wanna make sure we have Mach 2 belts going between the two splitters. And from the splitters to the smelters, we can keep Mark 1s. Going to set our recipes to smelt our iron. Remember to underclock 
production so that we're consuming the right amount. For our cast screw, that's going to be 28, as we can see on our flowchart. 28. Next, we'll connect up our power, get our smelters working. Next, we're going to place our splitters. Skipping the first smelter, place a splitter in front of the next two. Next, pull out our constructors. Starting from the left in the fourth row, place a row of constructors all the way across. From here, we're going to repeat the layout for our reinforced plates, connecting up our smelters to our constructors with Mark 1 belts. For cast screw, connect the smelter to the splitter in the middle, and then connect each constructor up to the splitter. Setting our recipes, starting all the way on the left, set the first constructor to produce iron plates. The next two constructors will produce our iron wire. Make sure to underclock them to make 20 per minute. Just control C and V. The remaining three constructors will all be producing cast screw and I like to underclock the center constructor to make the final 12 that we need. We can connect up power and get our constructors constructing. Next, grab our merger, again placing it in front of our iron wire constructors. Place a second in front of the cast screw constructors can use Mark 1 belts to connect up the iron wire constructors to one merger and the three cast screw constructors to the other merger. Next thing to do is again grab the assembler looking for that green line, place the first one down and then moving over to our right we're going to place the second assembler down with the right input lining up with this merger. Our left assembler will be set up to make our stitched reinforced plate, so we'll place our power shard inside, overclock it, and connect it up with belts. With reinforced plates working, last thing to do is set up our modular frames assembler. Scroll down until you have the bolted modular frames alternate recipe here. We are going to underclock it to produce four a minute since we can't provide that 140 screws we need and we'd rather have this number work out well with the reinforced plate. So by underclocking it to four, we get a nice equal number here with what we can create easily and we are under the 120 we need for our Mark, one, Mark II belts. Last thing to do is connect the reinforced plates up to our modular frames assembler. To do that, you can easily run some Mark 1 belts on the ground and connect them up. Of course, the final thing to do is connect your machine to a storage room and you're done. Now, I promised some blueprints at the start of this episode and I will be delivering on that, but I won't make you sit through watching me uh, go into super detail on all those, so enjoy some music, and uh, catch you in a few minutes.
All right. And just like that, we have created some pretty awesome blueprints, if I do say so myself. Now, of course, I'm keeping these very bare bones, but you can, of course, build around them, decorate them to uh, your heart's content. I'm going to keep them simple for the video. But uh, yeah, as you can see, everything flows nicely through them. All your items condense down below to one spot. Modular frames, of course, took a little troubleshooting, but everything's running nice and smooth now. Just waiting for the iron to get to that last constructor. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Um, like I said before, the blueprints and the world download are all going to be available from my Google Drive. So if you want to check that out, please do. Um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Got Coal Power uh, is the next tutorial in the works. And we are again going to use blueprints to make it all way easier. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.